Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. So what do you think? What is your take on this IP um, as the PF saga continues to go about in the news? Yeah, uh, good morning once again, uh, Chiti and the viewers. Of course, we've been awakened to another drama, political drama in the PF. We did mention, um, I think, um, some days ago that uh, this story will continue unveiling itself and um, developing into different shapes altogether. So it's not a game, it's not a battle that will end any time from now, but uh, we will continue watching. And at the same time, again, it is quite, you know, uh, interesting that uh, this matter has gone back to Parliament, where at some point it was uh, said that uh, this matter was uh, prematurely sitting before the National Assembly, and uh, it has been taken back. So we have to watch the space and see how best it's going to be adjudicated upon in the National Assembly. Um, but uh, to see the unfolding events in the PF, which is the largest political party uh, in Zambia, uh, opposition political party in Zambia so far, is quite um, disturbing in a democratic country. And um, of course, at what democracy sometimes entail that you are going to have conflicts here and there until you recover. But uh, certain things must happen based on what the law uh, stipulates. Uh, based on uh, law and order. So, to see a list of uh, people, names of people that have been expelled from uh, Mao Sapa's uh, led uh, uh, PF grouping, it's um, something that needs to, to worry. I can imagine having by-elections in about uh, nine constituencies. You know, with uh, the financial you know, challenges were going, uh, going on as a country today. And I remember very well there was a time when we were told by the head of state that uh, he is an enemy of by-elections. He said this in the opposition. He mentioned this when he formed government. And he <coughs> mentioned this in parliament not once, not twice, but a couple of times. Where he said by-elections must be avoided. Most say these are unnecessary by-elections unless those that comes as a result of uh, death and stuff like that. So to see us again talking about uh, the looming uh, by-election that we may have if the system doesn't handle this uh, uh, issue properly, if the courts doesn't really rise to the occasion and re you know rescue the PF as a political party, then there will be a problem. Let me make a mention here. That what is also disturbing in this uh, regards, I mentioned last time, that uh, the PF is no longer a, a party for the PF alone. It is a party for all of us as Zambians, based on the fact that it holds the majority members of uh, 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 parliament from the opposition side in Zambia. So it belongs to each and every Zambian. Should you kill the PF. Should the PF go into oblivion today, you have no democracy to talk about because there will be no members of parliament that will be offering checks and balances. We would have created a monster in the UPND which will remain alone in the National Assembly. We've got one uh, Hamadud MP who can't contain the pressure alone. We've got uh, about nine members uh, who are independent members of parliament in the National Assembly who cannot contain the pressure alone. We need these divergent and critical voices. No matter how irritating they may be to you as the speaker, no matter how irritating they may be to you as a member of the ruling party, but these oppositions are needed. So, 
let's see how this matter is going to you know unfold but uh, to see that on the other side the court is saying this matter is in, uh, i mean uh, the other stakeholders are saying this matter is in court but on the other hand again we are allowing uh, honorable mausampa to go on and on and make these uh, you know appointments Wow, well, it's quite interesting, like we said last time, that this is a litmus test for the, uh, the speaker and also the UPND government. More especially that we are at a time when the critical stakeholders, objective stakeholders, have pointed out that uh, the possibility is very high that the UPND is fully involved, of which even I have not missed my words, and I don't intend to miss my words that there is a, a likelihood that the UPND is fully involved and this is the defense to my uh, just uh, to my analysis I've given an example to say how did uh, Mao Sambo manage to have those uh, police officers huge police officers where I went to myself and covered that event where how did he manage to you know bring all those armored vehicles of police officers at a private, uh, you know, uh, event. Why is that when, when a mouse sampa is uh, arriving, coming from out of the country, is received by a huge number of police officers? Who is paying those police officers? Those are clear signs. Now, let me submit, Comrade um, Chiti, that uh, it would be interesting to see, because, you know, the, this law, I mean, the constitution is being tested on both ends outside the courts and also uh, in parliament. Last time when Honorable um, H. Totela raised a point of order, reporting to the speaker or advising the speaker to eject Honorable Mao Samba from the National Assembly, based on the fact that Honorable Mao Samba had been expelled from the PF for holding an illegal convention. The speaker was quick to run away from that matter saying or stating that I can't determine uh, over this matter reason being that this is a matter which has been taken to court so if I do so to remove or to reject on my mouth some as member parliament for material I would be in interfering in the law of law or in the constitution so therefore I will leave it as such and he, meaning that he will continue enjoying his privileges now, again, this very matter which is actively before the, uh, the, the courts. We've seen Honorable Mao Sampa and his grouping going to expel the other members of parliament. And the letter has been taken again back to the National Assembly. Is the speaker going to U-turn from her earlier position, strong position, and cope and nullify those seats or call for a by-election? Or she will remain as a law-abiding citizen as she claimed that time to say this matter is beyond me, I can't take it because this matter is still active before the course of law. Is she going to entertain to call for a by-election on the nine members of parliament based on the decision made by a member of parliament from Matero who held the by-election, who held the general election, uh, I mean a, a convention rather, at the time when he was an expelled member of the party. How is this going to, you know, twist itself? And uh, she said that according to her, when she was running out from that case of Honorable Mao Samba, she cited the case of Honorable Shimba of 2019, in which Honorable Kambuiri was illegally expelled by Honorable Amati Bin under case CC009. What will happen now? So it's a, an interesting case and uh, to watch, but the signs are very clear for those that are objective to see that there is an invisible hand which is pushing Honorable Mao Sampa. And even Chita can challenge you as a journalist. I can challenge my comrade here that if you want, go on the ground and see if Honde Mamao Sampa has the legitimacy from the party cadres as a president. 
or he is a president in, in court, not outside. But look from what I've discovered so far. I could be wrong, I could be right. If you listen properly, Comrade Fick and the viewers, you realize that the majority, if not all, the people, the sympathizers, even on social media who are supporting one of Mao Sampa's activities, these are UPND members, if not sympathizers. So I get to shudder, and they will defend with a passion. So no, no, Sampa is okay. Go on, Mr. President. And if you check their credentials here and there, you find that this person is a UPND sympathizer, is a UPND member. They are, uh, you know, time by all means to impose leadership on a private political party. So I ask myself, when did UPND start supporting PF? When did UPND start supporting Mao Sampa? So you get to one, and I agree with Dr. Fred Membe, uh, who a man who is sometimes very critical, he just speaks his mind. Yesterday I had a press briefing and he said, this matter, comrades, is beyond the PF because when they are done with the PF, they will come back to us, other political party. And I, I agree with you. If you're not coming back to other political parties, they will come back to you as individuals. And I agree with him. Because at a point where, when we speak today, even you as IP, people, they will, you know, begin to vilify you. They'll begin to insult you, which we don't get worried, anymore. I'm just stating this fact. So this is where there is a problem. Let me submit there. All right, thank you so much for that IP. Mr. Shingongo, what is your take on what is happening in terms of the PF? Uh, it's unfortunate. What's happening in the patriotic front is unfortunate. Um, neither sometimes we learn that sometimes, if you have to be you know, some, uh, to some extent, you know, some of these things that are happening to the PF, you know, if they had sorted out their in-house uh, issues on time, we, they would not be where they are today because um, their enemies found an opportunity to uh, take advantage of the, their own misgivings, their own, you know, internal uh, intra-party uh, challenges. <coughs> if they had sorted out their issues on time, will not be where we are today, talking about the patriotic front, talking about the two factions that can be there, the ECO-led faction, and of course the Mao Sampa-led faction, will not be where we are today, especially if as political parties we promote intra-party democracy. Political parties should learn to promote intra-party democracy. They should be able to hear cries from the people in their party and attend to them. Failure to that, you begin to write to, to, to raise enemies within your own organization. Someone said it is easier to fight an enemy from outside than fighting an enemy that is inside. Mm. You know, someone has said humorously over the issue of marriage, for example, mm. to say a problem that starts uh, from outside the house in a marriage is easier to deal with. Than, than, than a problem that starts from the bedroom. Yeah, yeah. Problems that start from the bedroom are very difficult to handle, but those that start from outside are, can easily be handled in, in, the, in the bedroom. And that is what I think political parties should learn to do. Whether it's a UPND, whether it's a patriotic front, whether it's a socialist party, let's encourage these political parties to be able to promote inter-party democracy. Failure to that, we'll keep on seeing these kind of issues happen. It's not the first time this is happening. Every time we, have, we are talking about succession, you know, issues around political parties, this always springs up. MMD, former ruling party, is another example. The UNIP itself, former ruling party, is another example. We have had issues when it comes to who takes over a political party in these organizations. And the challenge I have is that they never learn from history. They always keep repeating the mistakes, you know. Meanwhile, they have a, uh, a privilege to learn what has happened with other political parties, starting from the first ruling party, UNIP. What happened when, when, uh, when KK left power? Look at the way the son took over the party, and uh, even after, you know, uh, the, the, the bishop took over, there were, there were those issues 
Bishop Mwamba, when he took over the running of the party, there were those issues, others, you know, uh, revolting, and others even resigning, based on uh, Bishop Mwamba's uh, taking over of, of the party. If it's MMD, I think there are too many lessons that any political party in this country should learn from, starting from the president then, former uh, former Republican president, Rupia Banda, who wanted to, to return, you know, Kuwele Rapu, I don't know why this issue of Kuwele Rapu always comes back to these uh, uh, politicians, Nevers Mumba, Felix Mtati, and the factions that erupted for over five years, almost five years. That is something that I think politicians should learn from. And the PF is not an exception. And I can prophesy, uh, Chiti, the same things will happen in the, in the UPN because we've also seen that they don't promote interparty democracy. When last today hold the uh, democratic co convention to elect a new leader, even themselves, they, they know they can't answer that question. It will just tell you that these political parties uh, do not learn and don't promote intra-party democracy. And because of this, it's the genesis of the problem. Because of this, they now start taking themselves to court. Meanwhile, they can avoid all these issues. When we talk about the expulsion and the Mao San Palet faction, and I, I know that some people have been really condemning us in, in the media, uh, for calling the Mao Sampa group as a faction and you know some people are saying we are legitimizing it why are we calling it faction you know we are giving him power he's getting so much power because and authority because we are recognizing him as a faction leader our duty is to report what is in the public domain you know if there's a faction in UPN if there's a faction in UNIP we'll report it as it is and uh, whether the faction is legit or not it's up to the public it's up to the, the people in those political parties but us don't tell us not to recognize factions that that uh, emerge because we need to feed our viewers with what is happening in your in, in your institutions because even even last night uh, you know on the big hour honorable ronald stotella called and the first few minutes that was his concern mm. that we the media are adding fire to this by recognizing that faction. We are not recognizing that faction. We are reporting as it is. And I think it's our responsibility to report. Comrade, Comrade I think uh, as you proceed, what, what does the word faction mean? Mm. We need to begin to educate these politicians. Mm. The word faction meaning it's a, it's a grouping. As simple as that, it's a, it's a grouping. It's a group of people. So even here, if we, I decide to become a, a rebel, and then I say I'm the CEO of the, 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 the KBN TV. Mm. And then the matter goes to court illegally. Meaning, I'm leading, if you cheat, you become foolish and follow my, my, my newses. Still more, I'm leading a faction group. So it's a grouping. When somebody is presiding over a, a certain grouping of individuals, it, becoming, it becomes a faction group of that rebel grouping as simple as that it's a so we don't say this with uh, 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 with an apology to either dr mr stotella or anybody else this is the term that is you know officially given to us to use it in the media there are two grouping and also it's not just <coughs> in, the, in the political circles uh, uh chichi we remember what happened at the football association of zambia yes andrew kamanga formed his own yes. buzz his own fuzz. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's how Andrew Kamanga thinks should join politics because he, I think he, he, he has learned how these things, you know. Even in reality, you remember during Andrew Tewa's yes. time. Yes. It happened. Yes. So, are we supposed to keep quiet and not report those factions that emerge from no. those institutions? No. So, please don't. They, they will not give us the script on how to run our you know, program. Yeah. So, the faction of Mao Sampa, no one can deny that it is existing. It exists. And what is happening with expulsion, uh, Chiti, my, my little thought, okay, I'll tell you what I think is going to happen. And uh, I would want maybe after a, two, a week or two to be proven right or wrong. This is what is going to happen. Because, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll put context to this. We have Mao Sampa initially being expelled from the patriotic front mm. okay he was suspended before holding that uh, convention we the the, the the meeting he called convention he was a suspended member 
Then, after holding that meeting, he got expelled. After. So, we need to put context to this. He only got expelled after holding that convention. After he himself thought now that he was elected as a party president, as a step, that same evening, I had Imam Mwamba that same evening on the big hour, and that was the first news that was reported that we've now expelled the suspended member of parliament for Matteo. So, we have Mao Sampa that was suspended and later consequently expelled from the party, holding a convention. Now, hear me, and, and this is where you know, I'm drawing my, my, my thought from. This is one member that is suspended and consequently expelled from the party. And uh, the matter is taken to the court, right? Despite the matter going to the court, Mao Sampa's group writes a letter to the National Assembly indicating that uh, the patriotic front I lead has made changes on the leader of opposition. And do you know what the National Assembly does? Chidi? It recognizes that letter from Mao Samp and effects the changes in the National Assembly. As we speak, the one occupying the office of the leader of opposition, you know, when you go to the Parliament, National Assembly, uh, the office of uh, the leader of opposition is like the minister's office. I've interviewed him from, from, from that office before. It's, it's, it's even as secretaries, you know. But the one that is occupying that office now is not Mundubile. It is Robert Chavinga. From the Mao Samba. So National Assembly recognizes that. Despite the matter being before the courts of law. Okay? Then, there's the issue of the office bearers. Despite the matter being before the courts of law, Mount Sampa's group writes to notify the registrar societies under Minister of Home Affairs that we now have office, new office bearers based on the convention we held. As we speak, even you, Chiti, if you want, as a citizen, you can go park right just by the corner there. Just say, I want to check who the office bearers of PF are, who, who, who they are. It's a Mao's Sampa group. Despite the matter being before the court of law. Okay, please follow me. Despite that, registrar of societies has effected changes on the office bearers of the patriotic front. Two things have, have been done. Now, Mao Sampa goes ahead to discipline the members in his party in court and goes further to expel them and the same mouse Sampa that wrote a letter <laughs> to the national assembly to change the leader of opposition which was done the same mouse Sampa's group writes a letter to notify the speaker that these people have been expelled from the party the big question is what will stop the speaker from declaring those seats vacant what will stop her when the same speaker has recognized the letter that came from this group to change the leader of opposition what would be the difference at this point this is how i look at it nelly Moti is going to recognize that letter and Nelly Muti, according to the 2016 amended constitution, Article 72E, it states, it gives uh, Article 72 outlines circumstances that can make the office of the member of parliament to be vacant. And Article 72E indicates that when one is expelled from the political party that sponsored them, the seat is declared vacant. So, if earlier she recognized the letter from this group, what will stop her from recognizing this letter from the same group and goes ahead to declare the seat vacant? The only thing, the only thing that I expect for me is 
when she declares the seats vacant these MPs will go to challenge their expulsion before the courts of law and there the hands of Nelly Muti will be tied because it's not her responsibility to interpret the law when um, she's asked for example the case of uh, Mao Sampa you know being expelled and still enjoying the privileges and immunities of the members of parliament you know what she said in a ruling the matter is before the court of law so I'll let it I'll let the courts determine until then he continues but the expulsion has not been challenged and that's what I was even trying to question one of the expelled members um, last night on the big hour Fube Honorable Fube what are you going to do in case the speaker declares your seat back and he says I, I won't share my strategy that was his response I won't share my strategy what I expect for me is that if they do not challenge the expulsion which they are failing to recognize which they are denying to recognize for as long as they don't challenge the expulsion before the courts of law Nelly Muti will be right to declare those seats vacant and you know the way the law works once the speaker declares seats vacant you know the next step what happens the electoral commission of Zambia is notified and this is it we'll just tell you these are the dates for by-elections All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.